three, two, one. We'd like to welcome you to another edition of Grok Talk, brought to you by New Hampshire's leading conservative blog site, GraniteGrok.com. We are your fear, extremist, right-wing, hard-charging, gun-toting, opinionated, outspoken, rabble-rousing, letter-writing, radio, microphone-stomping, conservatives, and rational libertarians. So get ready for more news and opinion you could only get from GraniteGrok.com. Grok Talk. Than 7,500. Tell her we need more than hope. We need leadership. Paid for by Citizens for a Strong New Hampshire. Hi, this is Rich Gerard, host of Gerard at Large in the Morning. The Manchester area's only locally owned, locally operated, focused, and interested, riveting radio show heard live every Monday through Friday from 6 to 9 on 90.7 FM WLMW, New Hampshire Family Radio, and available 24 7 live or archived at GerardAtLarge.com. Be sure to tune in. This is the Coalition of New Hampshire Taxpayers. We're located at 8 North Main in Concord, New Hampshire. This is the repository for all things conservative and municipal. So if you have a problem in your town, your school, your budget committee, the right to know law, and now at the top of our list is voter fraud. Do you have a tip for us, some information for us, you want to join or help us out, cnht.org. Hi, this is Rich Gerard, host of Gerard at Large in the Morning. You're listening to Grok Talk. Three, two, one. We'd like to welcome you to another edition of Grok Talk. Brought to you by New Hampshire's leading conservative blog site, GraniteGrok.com. We are your fear, extremist, right-wing, hard-charging, gun-toting, opinionated, outspoken, rabble-rousing, letter-writing, radio, microphone-stomping, conservatives, and rational libertarians. So get ready for more news and opinion you could only get from GraniteGrok.com. Grok Talk. Welcome back to Bonus Grok Talk on November. November? Where did that come from? January 17th. November. It's November. It's cold. Now, uh, welcome back to Grok Talk. January 17th. Uh, we're happy to be here, and uh, we have a great topic and some great guests, and we're going to keep going because this is an important subject, so I'm not going to waste a lot of time chattering endlessly about where you can hear us and, and so on and so forth. We're just going to talk about Wyndham. And uh, right before we went to the break, I interrupted you, and you were going to make a great point, and I want you to continue, please. Yeah, I think I was talking about the uh, Inspector General's report in in uh, Massachusetts, yeah. So, you know, since we've got some, some time, I'd, what I'd like to do is maybe just read a couple of the quotes from that report because I, I think that they're very telling. Uh, and and, and before, before I get into that, a synergistic uh, changed their name from Energy Education Inc. in 2012. So it's a company that's been around for about 28 years. The first 26 is Energy Education Inc. And um, this Inspector General's report actually references them by name. Uh, it says, and, and, and it includes several quotes, which I'll read to you now. Before paying a vendor hundreds of thousands of dollars, this office strongly recommends that school districts determine if some energy savings can be achieved through other forms of education or energy conservation measures. Although EEI claims that its program is unique, energy conservation and management surface options exist in abundance. Okay, so let me just di divert for a second. Our, our administration w proposed that we enter into this agreement for $577,000 over five years without any bids, without, without, with, without any kind of competitive bid process in violation of our purchasing policy. Which claims, or which states that any purchase five thousand dollars or over must go out to bid when feasible. Now this is this this is a whole different branch that maybe if we have time I'll talk about. But the uh, the term when feasible, as defined by our administration, is uh, means uh, maybe when it's convenient, not when it's possible, and so uh, a vast amount of our purchases never get approved by the school board that should. 
But anyway, let me get back to this. Uh, so, 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 uh, so, Ken, this, it sounds like uh, Massachusetts had studied this company carefully and had basically said uh, it's an expensive scam. They didn't use that word exactly, but they're basically saying you're paying a high price for a dressed up version of something you could get practically for free off the shelf. And uh, they advised all Massachusetts school districts not to take this option. And so in the, in the presence of this publicly available information, your school board is saying, we'll, we'll go ahead and spend the money anyway and take the kickbacks. Over to you. Okay, well, this, this advisory I didn't find until Wednesday morning. So I didn't have this on Tuesday night. But, but like I said, I was so troubled. I was so troubled by the process that, um, you know, I wanted, to, I wanted to look into this further uh, and, and, and to get to touch upon what you're saying, Mike, is, is, is as in this advisory, they had a, a statement that said, this office recommends that awarding authorities not execute contracts until they fully understand the basis of the service fee being charged and should be able to tie the fee to a measurable product deliverable. It goes on to say that awarding authorities should be very clear on the following points. The 10-year projection used to market and sell the program is not guaranteed and the district is contractually obligated to pay EEI's fees regardless of whether the district ever achieves the projected savings. It also says that they guarantee only that the savings will exceed, will not exceed, it guarantees only that savings will exceed costs, not that the savings will equal EEI's projected savings. So, so in essence, if we save $577,000, EEI gets all of it, or Synergistics gets all of it. Question. Did anybody on the school boards bring up the notion that, gosh, guys, PSNH will probably do this for free? I did. Ken did. Absolutely. And what was the result? I was confident that, uh, you know, I, I, I brought quite a bit of, uh, of concerns. Uh, I spent with Mr. Murray. I reached out to Mr. Murray because it's been my philosophy since being on the school board that we have an awful lot of expertise in our town. We've got, um, we've got engineers, we've got contractors, we've got people who are CEOs of companies. And I, and I believe it's important that everyone who has a vested interest be involved uh, to whatever level they feel comfortable with the management of our local government. So in this case, uh, I wanted to reach out to PSNH. I knew they had th these programs that um, they provided free services for energy audits. Uh, they also provide uh, pro rebate programs, and, and I learned of this through Mr. Murray. So I reached out to him. I asked if he would be on a phone call with me, if we could find a contact at PSNH, and then just explore and see uh, what kind of programs uh, they could offer and suggest. Uh, between Monday and Tuesday, we, we spent about 90 minutes talking to them, and I was armed with this information thinking, hmm, we have an alternative. See, although our administration didn't go out and get competitive bids, I believe that we should have competitive options to consider before uh, spending taxpayer dollars that, in my opinion, are, are, are well and far beyond uh, the, the value that we were going to get in return. So uh, between the two of us, uh, we spoke with PSNH, and, uh, and I felt comfortable. Uh, I also uh, was concerned about the fact that we weren't taking any time to vet them out. And um, I mentioned that this agreement is, is in conjunction with the Salem School District, that if one of those districts didn't agree to the contract, that we wouldn't move forward. Back in September, Salem was going to do this with Derry, the Derry School District, and they refused. So I brought that up. I thought that that's a red flag. It's at least something that needs to be investigated, understood, what, what was it that Derry knew that we didn't know? What was it that they were either uncomfortable about or didn't make it right for them? Now, I brought this up in the meeting and the synergistics uh, representative gave me an answer, but I believe in due diligence and I believe that there's always more than one side to the story. And I, I wanted to have time to go ahead and talk to Derry about this and to get their feedback, uh, but to no avail. Uh, the following day, doing a lot of research, uh, it wasn't just the investor, uh, investor in, in, in the IG in Massachusetts. 
uh, report that raised my concerns. There were also other concerns, and you can read about them uh, on the Grok. They actually covered this story. They did a wonderful job. Uh, they took my letter to the editor, which lists the um, concerns of the in investigator general, as well as a couple of stories by Kimberly Morin, and you guys might have written some other stuff as well. Uh, I really appreciate the fact that you took the time to do that, to shine the, 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 the light uh, on this story. People need to be aware of what's going on in their school districts. Yeah, and I'll be putting up the, the video clip. It was nice of you to send me the DVD. I'm going to try to process that this uh, weekend. You know, that long school board, but the, it's the very end stuff that we need to get. So I'm going to try to clip that out so that people can see exactly what happened when recess police recess police. I mean, this is this is craziness. And it goes back to the Guilford uh, situation of somebody from the, uh, you know, a resident wants to go, wait a minute, you're doing this wrong. And the police are going to be called. This is way beyond just punishment of dissent. This is intimidation. It is. This is the it's bullying. It, it, it is. Thank you. I was about to say that. Here's all this time and bucks that are being spent by schools all over the nation. And here's the leadership doing exactly what they say they're trying to prevent the kids from doing it. But oh my, we get to do it to our residents, the voters who put us into office. We can bully them. Isn't this just ducky? And, and that's exactly what the, the chairman did. He, he, he bullied me. And, and I happened to be sitting right next to a reporter, by the way, in, when this happened. And, and I'm not going to tell you that I didn't raise my voice. Of course I did. When I, when I saw what they were doing and the, and, and the mistake that they were about to make in the motion, but to call the police and, 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 and to actually have two uniformed officers come down there, I, it, it was uncalled for. I even had the reporter, Barbara O'Brien, sit next to me and 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 ask like w the question shaking her head why did they why did they call the police you can go and, online to uh the to the area news group dot com she wrote a very good article uh, in this week's paper and it explains the situation i think very well now has anyone gotten any kind of feedback from the chair or whoever called the police to get their reaction. Why did you? Why did they do this? Or are they just doing CY8 uh, type stuff? I would say the latter of the two. <laughs> I I haven't heard I haven't heard um, a credible reason for why he he would do that. To be honest with you, I mean, I would have expected an apology or uh, some sort of, you know, um, I I made a mistake. Um, I should be hearing from the public. You uh, guys uh, need, at, at the lines. next meeting, you guys have got to set up a camera looking at them and then zero in on him. Watch the person. At, if it's not you, somebody else is go, what were you thinking? Mm. And right, you know, if you, they've got a public input session at the very top, take control of that meeting and ask, why did you do this? What what thoughts going through your head said that you've got the, the Stalinist, and I'm going to use that word specifically, the Stalinist tendency to basically run somebody out of the room for simply voicing uh, a, a disagreement. It, it, well, it's not only that. And he, then pr promised them, we're going to put this video up, and you've got to keep the, the... The one mistake you guys had is that they had the ability to turn off the camera. You guys have got to be able to say, I've got my own set of cameras. Well, that's true. But you know what? This isn't something that was planned. This isn't, this isn't no. something that we were trying but to... But it's an to, object lesson. It, it, you know, it, it, it is an object lesson. You know, um, the thing that I find disappointing is that in the article that I referenced uh, in the Pelham Wyndham News is that the chairman was asked about the policy, his policy. I want to be clear about that uh, because when I was on the Rich Gerard show, uh, Gerard at large uh, a couple days ago, uh, he, he, he kind of phrased a question, said, I chided uh, the chairman. I, I didn't chide the chairman. I, you know, I, after the decision was, at, when we were bringing it up for a vote, I, I took a couple of minutes and I explained that we were doing a disservice to our town, to, to our voters and taxpayers and parents. And, and I brought up the fact <coughs> that 
this was that I would like to hear from the public, that I would like to hear from the, the, the residents, our experts, as well as people on the Citizens Facilities Committee, uh, and that it wasn't my decision, you know, that the chairman put this unilateral policy into place. And I wasn't chiding him. I want people to know that I am not a part of this decision and that it's limiting my ability to serve in the role the way that I would like to do that. So, um, you know, I just wanted to make that clear. I, I wanted to bring something up, too. When the cameras did go off, there was some even more concerning things that happened when, when I was there. And, um, and, and thankfully, there was a reporter sitting right next to me. Um, there, was a, there was a comment that was made, and, and you have to keep put the, uh, let me try to put this into context. At the end of the meetings, a lot of the times, you know, the meetings will finish, we'll go out into the parking lot, and, um, and, and further discussions happen. Yep. And, All um, the time. And, 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 um, so we go out. I mean, we, we, we literally go outside after the meetings, and, and residents of the town and school board members will stand out there and talk about the meeting. I mean, that's what kind of small town this is. We know each other by first name. Yeah. And, and sometimes I'm there freezing my tushy off, you know, and we get out sometimes at 12, 1230 at night, and we're still there until 1.30 in the morning. And, you know, so that, that leads to, you know, the, the fact that, you know, for, for any of this to happen, to call the police, it's unacceptable. And, and, and just to revert back to the policy committee meeting when I was at odds with the chairman, you know, I told him, I said, you know, this, this was an embarrassment to our town. And, and 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 the policy wasn't followed, and you can clearly see. I came out. I think it was Educon when I when I yep. googled. There was one company. Uh, I mean, in seconds you can find competitors that do the same. It, it isn't a unique company from an energy conservation point of view. Correct. It, um, there's other companies out there, and, and our policy D J E clearly states anything over five thousand dollars for contractual service needs to go to three bids. And, um, and, 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 when, and when Mr. Cinebaldi, he sits on the board with me, he was asked this specific question when he was on Rich Gerard's show yesterday. Uh, he said, well, the board has the right to override the policy anytime they feel. Well, if that's no, the case, then why do we have policies? Yeah. I mean, this is the case where I've, I have been a political blogger now for almost 10 years and have been you know, an elected official. And I see it from both sides. You do want to get stuff done. But it's always the mindset on my part, because of the political blogging, of saying, I serve the people. I am the public servant. And yes, we do need to listen to people. Now, yes, you do have to manage the meeting so you can get your stuff done. Um, so you have to have the ability to discuss among yourselves what's going on, but then give the public the ability to put their input into it. But what's so hard is, in a case like this, unless you have deep pockets as an individual, and bring a suit against these folks, they stonewall you. And let's face it, that is the operative word for what we're seeing with these school boards. They're stonewalling everybody. And that's exactly And they're steamrolling they're people, people, bullying people yeah. to get a, what they want. Is there a, I mean, if it's a policy of the board to be able to ignore its own policy, is that written down anywhere? I mean, it, it, there, is a, there is a policy that says the, by, the board by majority vote can overrule in any policy. Now, that should be in there. It should. Mm -hmm. But when the administration ignores the policy, brings a proposal to the board, one company, they didn't do any competitive bid process, there are objections by the public, the, the, the fact that, that the decision was made on the spot and clearly, there were red flags. That's my issue. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the problem is, as a voter, if I lived in Wyndham, there's nothing I could do about this. Open and transparent government, good government, absolutely depends on that open and transparency in its policies, that they are clearly written, they are not shadowy or vague, Right. And that, as a voter, you expect your elected and appointed officials to follow them to the rule, absolutely, so that at any point, a voter can say, Where, where's the audit trail? Correct. And so how, I, how do I know that this has gone on versus, basically, they're 
they're ruling by whim. Not managing, not being responsible, but ruling. And that's a very harsh term to use, but that, in effect, is what it sounds it to be. That they we're kings of the world in our domain here in the school district. We're going to do what we want, when we want, and no matter how much it is, and you can't say pupkis. As it, a citizen, it's more sit down, shut up, and let me do things. It's and the progressive way. Somebody yeah. needs to sue them. Well, it, well, that and that's what I started off exactly. with. It's you a manifest injustice is what it somebody is. Somebody needs to find somebody who is willing to step up and sue them because, I mean, this is $577,000, at least 570000 which probably doesn't need to get spent, right. at least. That's yeah. correct. You know, now, that's how right. much is the legal budget for the school district there, Mr. Ken? I just uh, looked at that, and um, I think we spent... I think it's eighty-seven thousand dollars is what we've spent. That can be gone in a flash if somebody were to step up and do this. <clears throat> trust me, I know this; these kinds of numbers, um, you can, you, that can disappear in a heartbeat. But the problem is, how many people out outside of the school board are willing to do that? I mean, it's a lot of time, it's a lot of effort. Even if you do it pro se, do it yourselves, and certainly we know people who know how to do that and who could help you out. Jorge Mesa Tejada, uh, Doug Lambert, Ed Tom Nail. Cardiff, Ed Nail. I mean, there's a bunch of people who do this because it's the right thing to do. Now, if they followed all their procedures, they did multiple bids and all that other stuff, you know, that's one thing. But to do this in an ar what seems to be an arbitrary and capricious manner, yeah, but it's, it's not easy. And that's, I think, one of the problems we see in our government, that it's too hard to roll bad decisions back. The only accountability you have is come election time. Oh, gosh, when are your town elections? Two months. There you go. <laughs> start now. Get a hold of the voting list and start calling. The problem is is that the school boards tend to protect the schoolies, as I call them. You know, They're there to protect the, the government end of the educational industrial complex. And as you're seeing now, not so much to protect the voters and the taxpayers. And that's a huge, huge deal. And that, I blame, on the New Hampshire School Board Associations. They, th there is a wall of enmity between the school boards and the voters they're supposed to represent. And trust me, as a budget committee member, I have s seen that for years. And the teachers are no better. I mean, the teachers look down their noses at the parents, too. And I've got that on video. We've posted it several times where the teachers say, we know best or what is better for the kids than the parents. And they sneer at the parents. Well, you know, that may be true in some districts, and it may be true in ours, but I would have to tell you that for all of the experiences that I have with the teachers in the Wyndham School District, personal experiences with my children going through it and with, with teachers reaching out to me now, uh, I would have to say that we, uh, that we have great teachers. We really do. The problem is that even our teachers are being restricted in how they can educate in the classrooms. The they're, problem they're being is, given scripts. The problem is, Ken, they're being taught that in educational school. I know a, a young lady trying to get a special ed degree, and she just fell over on her chair when the instructor said, a big part of your role is to monitor the parents. And I went, what? <laughs> monitor the parents. I mean, you, I, as a political blogger, I see this kind of stuff all the time where the right. teachers know best and they're trying to subvert the parents in their values. You wonder why homeschooling is exploding, why charter schools are preferred. That's part of it. But they're, it's not so much that the teachers just do it anyways, but they're being taught that. You know, so the Bill Ayer um, School of Education. Yeah, we, um, where are we going from here with this? Um, Obviously, we've come up with a few suggestions, but uh, you know, your your current course of action is to educate the public, to right. get people aware of the circumstances, of the situation involving your conversation with the police, and of course, what the board did. And uh, you did say there's an election coming up, which is an important uh, facet of the next uh, couple of weeks worth of conversations. Um, what's the plan? I mean, how do we? I think I think the plan is to get the 
community more involved and just to understand and recognize what's going on. That's hard. You know, it, it is hard. It's Very difficult. Hard. Well, I think you know. I think what Tom said. I mean, he's got examples where there's tens and thousands of dollars being thrown out windows, hundreds of thousands of dollars being wasted on the consultant class, and um, you know, when people look at their tax bills, and then they go, "Oh, well, the school district's just wasting a half a million dollars." It begins to stir up a little interest, even among more casual voters who wouldn't show up at a town election. Need lots of letters to the editor with specific examples. You start a snowstorm. Mm -hmm. Mail, mailers, you know, before the election. Uh, you know, there's uh, maybe somebody needs to start a pack. <laughs> you know, register with the attorney general. Oh, SB 120, back and, again. Uh, and just, you know, I mean, I think it's important. And these are the issues that Gal, I mean, when uh, Billy Bear got arrested, it became a national story. Yep. I mean, it was national news. We had him on here for 45 minutes talking about what happened to him. Um, it it doesn't take a lot to elevate it to that level. And maybe in your situation, you actually get arrested. But um, we've got those other examples that we've had in the state. And we have enough evidence to suggest that school boards are implementing a policy. I mean, we had that discussion with Jorge about how uh, superintendents are getting more aggressive and aggravating and annoying, even to school board members. And um, it, this culture has developed where they really are elevating themselves above parents, the students, the teachers even, right. and and dictating from on high, and, and that, that whole just eliminating public comment thing. I mean, you need to control comment. You can't, you don't want to have nine-hour meetings. You really don't. But, you know, people need an opportunity. They need three minutes. If you, you know, you train yourself in three minutes, I have to talk about this subject and get my input, even if it's three. Yep, I would if say. You've got, I, would I mean, say if you said, so. in three minutes, you said, I've looked at the buildings, or I've looked at the thing, and I've talked to this person or that person, and PSNH does this for free, and this company will do it for half of that price. I don't say no. I say no right now. Why don't we give it another week? Give it another month. You can say that in three minutes. And if it's on the public record, then you can point at it, and bloggers can blog about it, and, and people can pick it up and say, well, why did you vote for a $577,000 contract given all the variables that we've been talking about, that you talked about in the paper? I mean, it, that, that election has to do something. Something has to change. Somebody has to send a message. If it doesn't change this election, then the Wyndham School District will be business as usual for the next two years. Mm -hmm. How many seats are up? Two seats. Two seats? Out of? Out of five. That make a difference. Is it two seats you might want to flip? Or is it just... I would, I, would, I would like to leave that up to the voters. I, I know. Be, I believe that uh, we need to educate <laughs> them as answer. to what's going on. <laughs> no, sir. Well, you know That's what? That's true. No, no. I would like to see people uh, who are more aligned with my uh, vision and understanding and philosophy of representing the public. I have no problem saying that. Start asking. The, 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 the two people who uh, sit on the board to my right, the chairman and the person who sits uh, to his right, uh, we, uh, I would say, at time, in most instances, when it's not a 5-0 vote, because you know, there are times where we can all agree on certain things. Uh, I'm usually in conf contrast with what their positions are. You know, I believe, you know, we need to have a great education for our kids. We need to put great teachers in the classroom, uh, but we need to do that in a fiscally fiscally responsible manner. We have people who built the town of Windham. When I moved there 16 years ago, it was a quaint little town that was just so inviting for uh, families and the community. It's wonderful. I've spent time coaching dozens of teams. I've got to know many, many people and their children. It's a great place to live. And the people who built this town need to have an opportunity to continue to be able to afford to live there. We can't price, it, price those families out of town. And I want to make sure that we continue this, this great personal community where everybody can come together for the right reasons for the kids for the teachers you know and to get as as you said tom our money needs to make it to the classroom right all right that's a pretty good place to stop because we're uh, at the end of the segment so tom and ken thank you so much for coming down here and uh sharing your story and, and helping us maybe activate some voters and activate some activists and uh do you have a taxpayer group in windham we do it's a windham taxpayers coalition oh, yes, you, of course you do because ed's done some some previous work with them <laughs> Well, we'll talk to Ed and see if we can get him involved in this. Maybe he'd like to take up that banner as well. I'd like to thank everybody who came on the program today. We'll be back next week with more guests. 
uh, more conversations, more uh, insight, more outrage, and more Grok Talk. Grok TV.